Nancy Klein blog, we had a little bit of a delay there. You know, Skynet thinks they slick. Skynet ain't gonna get me today, okay? Y'all gonna have me on this show. Now, if you don't know who I am, author of the Smart Phone Millionaire book, How to Invest in People, Businesses, and Real Estate from the Palm of Your Hand, baby. Also, author of the Classy Climb Planner, somewhere on this messy desk over here. And let's get it in. Everybody, if you're here and you like the show, you like what I produce and create for y'all, put a one in the comments. It's very helpful for us to determine future activities and future things we do. So you may have seen the title and you said, oh my goodness, what is Eric about to talk about? Well, I was driving by and I saw this guy on a ladder, ladder and I was thinking about it. I said, listen, I got to break it down to them how simple and easy it is to start low tech businesses. Now, what is me? Everybody's wanting to be tech. Everybody wants to be coding. Everybody wants to be trading stocks. But listen, the fastest, quickest business you probably start in a week. And for some of y'all, a couple of days is a service business. But not like you think. Now, now, I'm not telling you to go out there and you physically mop, clean, uh, paint, put a fence up. I'm saying you can actually, from the your computer and your laptop, control and manage a business that makes multiple six figures a year. How do I know? I did that. Many people, they see the channel now, but they didn't see us in 2014. They didn't see me in 2015. In 2016, where I was three and a half years running for my laptop, people paying for services, my friend going out there and fulfilling the services and our workers fulfilling the services. They didn't see that part. They didn't see us doing fences. They didn't see us do six figures and ultimately give most of our contractors 60%, us 40% and us have some staff that went on to do bigger and better things. Now, many of you go, well, Erica, you're not doing painting or fencing now. That's right. I sold it. I sold my share. Why? Because it's a low tech business. It's something you can get in and get out of. Even as solid steps to wealth. I'm pretty sure right now she is the appliance repair queen for a reason. Because if you read the book, <clears throat> Illusions of Entrepreneurship, the average entrepreneur that you're going to encounter is going to be 44 to 48 years old. They're going to have a wife that works or part-time works, kids, and they're going to start a low tech business. Point bank here. They're going to start a low tech business. Why is that? Why are they starting low tech businesses, y'all? They're easy to get in. And if you need be easy to get back out. Now, many of you have been asking for about two years now for me to do the middleman to millions course. Some of you have already gone on to start doing projects. Congrats out there. To salt steps. Well, but here's the deal. The reason it works so well is because we're now again. The whole point of me writing this book, Smartphone Millionaire, How to Invest in People, Businesses, and Real Estate from the Palm of Your Hand, was because I was physically doing that. I was physically paying clients, paying contractors, getting paid from clients like this all day. Like this all day. Do you understand how fast that was going? And that is what you're going to see right now in the season of Rona more than ever. This is the best time to start. Now, why are you going to say this? Some of y'all is home and you ain't leaving home. <laughs> Whether you got kids, I know people with special needs kids. I know people with kids that are sick, autoimmune diseases, all kind of stuff. They're not leaving. They stay in home. You don't have to leave home with this. Now, in the class, I'm going to tell you the pitfalls, the wins, the losses. I'm going to tell you, you literally, and there's no hype to this. You can go ask anybody. You can ask Lenny Cameron. You can ask any of these people. You can start. The way I'm teaching it, you can start right now. If I hop on the computer and I get that business bank account and I get some shirts and I get a few things rolling, I'm going to have leads. I don't have to go knock doors. I don't have to put out knockers. I don't have to put out signs. I don't have to put out banners. I don't do any of that. I get leads where? From the computer. And why? Why? More than ever, People want what? A comfortable, nice home. See, people are discounting the fact that all these people are running out of the city going where? To the suburbs, to the rural areas, to the in-between towns, to the squeeze parts, where they may get into a home that's 1999, 1980, 2000s, and it needs repair. But guess what? She ain't got a handy husband. It happens. 
A lot of our clients were elderly, just couldn't reach up there anymore, couldn't paint that high, high ceilings. You name the reason, there was a reason why. You have a lot of single men, you have a lot of single women who just don't have the bandwidth or the desire to get on ladders and injure themselves, potentially. You have a lot of men who are what? They don't have all this, all the hours necessary or the certifications to be what? A licensed plumber, a licensed welder, a licensed this or that. But they could be a handyman. Why am I using this definition in this term? Does anybody know what the definition of handyman is? Put it in the chat. If you know what the definition of handyman is, if you understand the concept I'm trying to talk to you all about, because I don't want to be out here talking to y'all like, I don't know what she's talking about today. <clears throat> And I know we at the back window, but I didn't have time to turn around this big desk or chair. Does anybody know the definition of handyman? Put it in the chat. I know it's a 30 second delay, but I'm gonna give y'all a second. And what's the most coveted time of day that people wanted us to come work on their house? 10 to two, before the kids got home, before the husband got home, before the wife got home, where they had to cook dinner. They want us in there and out of there. Even when you're telling them, man, we're going to paint your whole house. Fence work, easy to spot. It's easy to spot fence work. It's easy to spot things that need repairs, depending on where you're driving. Okay. Fixing around the house, jack of all trades. A handyman is legally someone who can basically use, yeah, no license required. Handle small jobs for cash. That's some of the thought process. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, a superhero for the handicap. That could be true. What is the also the problem with a lot of handyman and contractors? Put some of the problems you guys are experiencing with contractors. In the and I know I know there's plenty of horror stories. So go ahead and drop in there some of the problems you guys have experienced with hand with handyman and contractors. What are some of the problems you guys experience? Okay, handyman are skilled but usually unlicensed. Handyman is someone who's skilled at doing some level of technical work like plumbing and carpentry. Very good, yes. Drop it in the comments. Let me know, baby. Now, why am I talking about this? I ran a company for three years and I think Glendon gave me a shout out. I recorded it somewhere. I put it on Instagram where, you know, I didn't start with the YouTube blowing up and all this. I was in an office watching a young man painting an apartment complex that I worked for, make $300,000, almost half a million dollars off of one apartment complex. I started seeing his painting numbers. I started seeing his, his, his quotes, his bids. Why did I see it? Because I was a billings manager. And guess what? Your girl learned every single step how to whoop, this, this, whoop, okay, we're going to do this and we do this and we hire for this much and we pay our painters this much. I was able to learn every single step and it was valuable. And I actually applied it and it worked. Why did it work? Because there's high competition. It's high competition because nine times out of 10, people aren't reliable. They hear one day, gone another one. Listen, I'm going to read some of y'all horror stories because I know y'all got them. They janky, no callbacks, not dependable. They walk off the job. Problems are, problems are not showing up or shoddy job completion. No discipline. Don't keep a schedule. Lazy, bad paperwork, inconsistent, dishonest, not showing up, flaky as hell. They take too long to respond because they're working multiple jobs. Work might not finish the job. Lazy shape. Ooh, God. They've been hitting y'all hard, huh? Some tough ones. See some tough ones. Lazy and shady. Mishandle funds. Piss poor work. They don't have a vehicle big enough to pick up all the necessary supplies or need you to do the running around to pick up supplies. That right there. They schedule you and don't show up. Lack of transparency on cost. We talk about that in the course, baby. Not professional. Don't meet deadlines. Bringing dusties with them. Yeah. Y'all already acting up. I can't. <laughs> Boat just said bringing dusties with them. I cannot. Y'all too much. 
I always want to do more than necessary. That's right. Upselling people, right? Play the game because they know you need them. Okay. Let's try to keep going. Thankfully, in my city, an investor called Kenny Rushing created a network called Rehabber Superstore, instant vetted contractors and skilled labor. Well, thank you for Kenny Rushing. And what city and state is that, Herbert Scott? Not everybody has that in their city, right? That's where we come in. They can't estimate the completion of the time of the job accurately. Don't return calls, no written estimate, vague estimate. Don't show up on time. Can't do math. Okay. I'm starting a plant repair company now. Dang, y'all killing handyman. But that's Oregon Brown. Is this true or not? Is this made up or not? Are these people making up these answers or not? This is real life. Ask me to rent a ladder so they can do a job. Don't have the tools. Solid steps of wealth. All the above is true. This is why Miss Ward has zero tolerance in my business. It's not happening. You're not messing up my brand. Tampa, Florida. Okay. Tampa, Florida. Florida Florida is notoriously known on American greed as contractor scam city. The whole state of Florida. It's the worst because you have the most elderly. You have the most vulnerable populations of people who aren't always there. Sometimes they call them snowbirds. Y'all are in the news. Never, ever on time. Yeah. Listen, again, straight up lying. <laughs> Damien ain't even playing straight up lying. Why am I bringing this up? Why am I bringing this up? The reason I put the middleman, the millions course together is because you win by just being organized, by just having a simple place for them to pay in advance and guesstimate how much time it will take. It's so bad out here that if you just have a, a crew of consistent handymen that ain't even the most skilled, because let me tell you right now, you'll meet contractors who are the most skilled, wonderful do works of art. Guess what? Don't finish on time. Disappear. Wild out. Do all kind of stuff. Own drugs. Just weirdness. Because there was a lack of business, a lack of people going into these trades, the 1980s to 2000s. Why? Because we started directing children from, from going to trade school and we started closing down home ec and shop and plumbing out of this public school system to them going to college, to them having to go to community college to get a simple trade. So we've made a shortage of men who will do what? Do that type of work. But guess what's happening right now? Welcome to the return. A lot of young men are going to look at their hands and go, I can't get in the office. I don't want to go in the military. I don't want to drive a truck. Guess I'm going to have to figure out how to do something. I'm going to watch YouTube. Get to figuring out how to fix something. Right? <clears throat> Michael Atkins said they want money up front before a job. Yep. This is why I did so well in Florida, because competition sucks. Damage to property. Thyro needs to know what's a dusty. Somebody tell him what a dusty is. Drunk on the job. I have people call me for handyman jobs because the people they talk to don't have insurance. I'm, listen, we go over that in the course. Just you saying your license and insured. Just you having guys put on a clip. You see this shirt I'm wearing right now? This And every time I, I'm on the phone, my friends are like, why are you wearing a collared shirt here? You don't have to do it. You own your own business. It's a perception of when you come in this office. Sienna Hart visited us today. She's here in Austin, Texas and visited us at the office. Half my staff didn't have their nice wardrobe on. Makes you look disheveled. And let's be even more clear. We got some crazy old people out there. So wouldn't you want your staff to come in with a nice collared shirt and khaki pants? So they know who they are when they show up at the door. Have you ever seen some handyman come to your house? You about to, are they about to rob you? Or are they about to, uh, what are they, they got holes in their pants, holes in their shirt? There are very key things that you can do to rise above, to make 150000 to 300000 a year. That's not, you ain't getting all of that. And that's gross, not net, baby. Okay, you got to give a little bit to the workers. And that's what that's why I was hesitant on showing y'all how to do it, because it's it takes a manager's heart and it takes mindset and focus. But what I realized with this Rona is a lot of people are going to those homes. A lot of people are going to those rural areas and they need handyman. They need on time handyman. They need qualified staff. This is where y'all could come in. It costs nothing to create a uniform. I mean, these shirts, you can get these, buy up a bunch of them at 
academy or a wholesale and go get your stuff it etched on them. It's so cheap. Build a solid business in Florida in less than three years. Yeah. Man, what kind of men are those? But I ain't gonna say nothing, nothing on that. I ain't gonna say nothing on that. Um, but I started recording the course over the course of this weekend and putting really good things in there and showing y'all how there's actual websites where they can just go in and book and pay you. Mobile detailing, carpet cleaning, lawn care. Do you know what makes people comfortable? The fact that they can go on a website from their phone, click and pay you in advance. Because what does what does uh, Mookie and Sean come do when they come talk to you? Hey, you know what you need? You need this other thing. Oh, you know what else you need? You see the gutters over there. They're trying to constantly upsell you. People don't like that. I can tell you right now off experience, uh, Andre, uh, Andrew, sorry, not Andre Hatcher, but Andrew Bryant, my business partner. When we split the business, he won customer service of the year from Home Advisor. Do y'all know how sad that is that we're not even full time business people? We're we're literally from our laptops booking fence repair and we won customer service of the year. How is that possible? Because people are that bad. So I talk in the course about how, you know, follow up strips, how to get your customers to directly pay you. Never pay the workers. Never do that. That's a no, no. And what they'll do is that'll get you straight to the money coming in your business. You've been able to kind of get them all online. The reason they come to you, I'm going to tell you right now, the reason they come to you is because their business is janky. One week they make, they got $3,000 and they stunting on you. Next week they broke as a joke. They phone turned off. They wife need pampers. Everything's wrong. Hey, just give me a ch Hey girl, I'm calling you back. Well, I called you four weeks ago for work. Where you been? This isn't for real. And this is how you keep them in line and keep them in the pipeline. And actually, I am more favored for workers that you send out and get some training here and there. Do you know what I'm saying? Process for profit. Answering the phone is a lost art. You know why? Because they actually out here painting. They actually own the roof. And if they got a job right now, it's paying them well. They got enough money for beer money on Friday. Guess what? They ain't answering the phone. They ain't got to. And they sure ain't checking their voicemail. You dig what I'm saying? OK, so that's why I put that course together, because I was like, we did it for three years. I literally if I wanted to go, you know what? I'm tired of y'all. I'm tired of these trucks. I'm tired of y'all. I could go pop this laptop up, go put a girl in the office over there, have a phone that she answers and get it cranked right back up in like a week. Now, again, everybody stays different. Everybody's LLC is different. Everybody's insurance where they are in their state is different. I ain't going to front to you. But if you don't see where we're going to need more service businesses. In the next couple of years, I don't know what y'all doing. Uh oh, yep. Went to a house to fix a crook top. End up fixing the pool in the pool in the spa while I was there. Quick extra seven hundred, yeah. And you know why? It's not a ClickFunnels link. It's an actual link to uh, purchase the course. You know why? Because they trust you. We still got old folks today who call and say, hey, we're just seeing if you guys could come do this. And I go, well, thank you, ma'am, for calling. And, and y'all know if you come to my office, you see I have about seven little burner phones on this desk. I go, ma'am, um, I'll send this over to <laughs> Andrew because, you know, I'm not with the company anymore. I don't tell him that. I say, hey, I'll send him over to Andrew and he can help you out. All right. So Kamoy in the class, I talk about in the class. I talk about the pros and the cons um, because honestly, here's hear me out. What did we just read? What did I just read at the beginning of this? They ain't got the right tools. They need tools. They need you to go rent stuff. They need you to give them some money so they can go purchase things. This is a mess. And some of you are going to rather have just a few employees, not a ton. Because what we learned, we had the painting company. We'd have contractors. We had a really nice, well, we had one dude who was old. He was like 80 years old. And his wife was like 75. They were Hispanic. His wife cleaned houses all the time. But she started to slow down so he could still paint. He could still paint. He'd do a lot of outdoor jobs and he could just put his little hat on and he'd be out there just to paint. And she'd be helping him here and there. And they weren't fast, but they could do it for cheap. And they liked the feeling of knowing they were going to get paid every Friday. And so they really weren't contractors for us. They were really like employees. Now, we had some other employees on staff, too. A younger guy, he was just like a helper. In my opinion, um, 
I think our employees did better long term than our contractors. Our contractors were here, there, out, bouncing in and out. You know, our employees were consistently trying to get better. Right. Like, oh, I went to this house today and I did this or we got on this ladder or I did this today or I learned this new thing. And so what they end up doing is, in my opinion, depending on what you pick. Now, let me be very careful. Some of y'all going to choose carpet cleaning. Some of y'all going to choose lawn care. Make the decision for you. But you have to think about it like this. Sometimes the independent contractor, they don't even have the supplies they need to do the job anyway. So you end up fronting the cost. Now, think about it. if I got to provide you a ladder and every time you got to bring it back, where am I going to store the ladder? Where am I going to store the paint? Where am I going to store the brushes? Where am I going to store all this stuff? So to get it as close to you just being a laptop and go, independent contractors work well. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, one of our friends, his business, he literally has a storage unit over here in Pflugerville. And the guys drive up, open the storage unit, get his stuff out. And it's it's cameras, lights over there. So if one of them ever wants to be crazy and steal, they gon' it's only four of y'all who, who got who took it out of the garage, right? So it, it depends. And I kind of break that down the course of like what's better for you, especially if you're not in town, if you're traveling, you know, come way out there living her best life in Spain and Italy and all over the world. So for you, you probably want to work with a bunch of independent contractors and like one employee that is like the mop up consistent. Now, why I call them the mop up consistent? Anytime there's a gap in the schedule or the contractor's like, oh, I really can't. I'm over here doing some work for somebody else. You got that employee that, hey, right? And an employee is going to have fuller avail availability to you than a contractor. Do I run ads? You do a, a, you do a combination of things. And we talk about in the course, there's a combination of things you can use. Um, I think starting out, uh, everybody loves word of mouth, but I think you need to do both. For us, we, we did what we would do is we do a little bit of home advisor. Then if the prices got too high, we bounced out. And then home advisor calls back, hey, hey, hey. We'd be like, oh, we're real busy now. We can't help you. Then they bring the prices back down. So there's a lot of different ones we bring up in there because there's like 15 different companies that you can use to bring you leads that you never, you don't have to put out a sign, you don't have to do anything. You literally get it from online. Why? Because the average person is on their phone doing what? How to fix blah, 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 right? And I'm going to say this, and it's just the best thing. Men that break something in a house, the wife calling you to fix it while he's gone at work. Hey, yeah, it started leaking. And so we just we just called this guy to come over because it was leaking everywhere, baby. The guy comes in, fix it, 80 bucks, I'm out. Fix it, 200 bucks, out. It happens way more than you think. So there's definitely a market for it. I mean, I, I, I was joking with my friend the other day about I literally could start something up right now and it would be hilarious. I mean, I really could, honestly, uh, because it's that simple and it's not changed that much. And when I drove by and I saw the man on the ladder, I could tell he was new, right? He was new at doing this. And I'm like, this Rona is going to have a lot of new people out and they're going to have to learn that they're going to want to work with the company. So Kamoy says, stop exaggerating. Come on, Kamoy, don't, don't be ashamed that you're out there living the best life. Total and complete disorganization. This pandemic is shining a spotlight on disorganized people. Been waiting for weeks for replies for various things. I'm, I'm t let me tell you, when I keep telling y'all, the only reason I even dropped this is Jamar sparked this interest for me to finish the course finally. But like, what's funny is it, she, she not lying. People are so bad. Y'all think it's a joke. People are so bad that you literally, I remember we were, when we first did this one call, home advisor, they said, please, can y'all take this? You know, it'll be free. I said, something's wrong. Andrew, they want us to take this call for free. They're not going to charge us for this lead. Something went wrong. We pick up the phone. We go, hey, man, we're just trying to see if we can come by and give you a good estimate. Oh, my God. Thank you. Thank you for calling back. I had three different guys fall through and not return my calls and not return. They gave me fit. I mean, like this lady was desperate for something to be fixed in her house. I can't remember exactly what it was, but it was a combination of her fence because she had HOA and something on the side of her house. I think it was maybe siding or something. Her dog did something and it was a small fix. But you know what those guys had decided? Oh, that's too small. I'm not going to waste my time. That's what they had decided. See, see, we didn't want to tell her that. We didn't want to tell her that, that, hey, ma'am, guess what? 
these men just decided it wasn't worth coming to your house to fix seven parts of your fence so your little dog doesn't get out and fix this part where this dog apparently tore up the side of this thing. It wasn't worth it to them. And so calls like that is what made me frustrated because I was like, any of y'all could have drove by and did this in 30 minutes or an hour. And then that lady led to us doing other projects at our house, fixing gutters, fixing other stuff. Why? Because sometimes it's not big jobs that make you win. It's the little ones. It's where the client feels so comfortable. She's going to tell all, I hate to say it this way, all her single spinster friends that she get, oh, they fixed my everything. Oh, they did this, they did that. Because it's important. When you have an emergency at your house, it's important to you. And this is where a lot of these guys lose. Yes, the course is live. I'm uploading a lot of the videos up tonight. <clears throat> I got to run some more, record some more videos, but it'll mostly be done tonight. Okay. But it's live. You can purchase there. <clears throat> yep. Customer service is terrible. Callback is terrible. Do you know how easy, like right now, part of the two businesses I'm buying and, and you guys will know that people who come to the boat party are going to get a special tour. We're going to probably be on a tour bus for a few, for like a little bit. And we're going to go tour some of the stuff I purchased um, before the Saturday dinner. But for those of you, do you understand that the reason I'm purchasing two of the businesses, they have no reviews. They got no pictures. They got no, they're on the internet. Both businesses have been out for 20 years. There's nothing on them. You don't know if they do good business. And when I'm there, I'm like, your customers love you. But how will people know? More than ever, you got 65 million businesses out here that are service-based. Guess what? Maybe 4 million have any kind of significant advertising. And you may think, well, 4 million is a lot, Erica. It's really not. I remember we had a competition. He really wasn't our competition, but he kept going to the same neighborhoods we did. And he had a truck, a F-150, and he had it wrapped. To wrap your truck, it'll cost about three grand. And that time out, we were both like, we ain't paying that. We are not paying that. And <laughs> he wrapped his F-150 and we saw him in the parking lot one day at Chick-fil-A. We're like, hey, we know you making a ton of money. He said, man, my phone rings off the hook. And he was laughing. He was doing exactly what we were doing, but he was, he had removed himself from doing any of the work. He just had that truck wrapped. And because it looked professional, people rang his phone nonstop and he had somebody in his office to reply. Oh yes. You saw our truck. He was probably going to do work. This man won't go to do no work. He was just driving around town. Okay. <laughs> going around town and, and checking up on some of his employees work. And that's how sad it is out here that people are so unprofessional that a truck being completely wrapped showed you the difference. Now I'm going to tell you what's the distinction. You ever drive and you see a truck with a little bitty magnet sign on it like this big or a little bitty magnet sign on the back? Do you trust that person? Do you think that person's a full-time plumber, a full-time electrician, a full-time handyman? No. When you see that little magnet sign, to me, that shows me somebody who's not fully committed to the business. This is something they do on the weekends for extra money. And when they're not, they hang out with their kids, they pull those little magnets off. There's a lot of little stuff we are going to talk about inside the course just for that. <clears throat> oh, my God, you guys. Thank you for Super Chats. OK, whoa, let me go up here. I run my construction cleaning company with a storage unit of stuff for those struggle to 99. I'm telling you, it gets ridiculous. So even though people are like, well, I just rather use contractors, you're going to have to still need stuff. I'm going to tell you right now, we ran through. $2,000 in paint brushes? I said, damn, what are y'all doing? Eating them? What's going on? Oh, yeah, we need more paint brushes. Why? Where's the last paint brushes? What happened to them? Oh, we need another hammer. How can you lose a hammer? You work on fences. It's the small stuff. So you got to keep in mind, you're going to need a budget for that, right? And then I talk about in the class how we work back the numbers. It was easy for us to determine after we had one, one ladder incident inside of a house painting that I was like, whew, I kind of ready to get on out of this, Andrew. We got to focus on something else. Then he focuses on fences. He said, we can do one fifth of the work we do now if we just do fences. And you can drive around all day and see where fences need fence repair. And I didn't think about that. And I drove around one day. I'm like, you're right. Man, you see this everywhere. 
Why? Because HOAs ain't playing about fences. They're not playing about painting, awnings, fallen things. They're not playing about that stuff anymore. So. Um, so the so I actually talked about several services. I talk about it from our perspective where we were painters, painting and remodeling, right? And we hired out sometimes for different projects. We also switched over to fencing. Uh, but you can use this for lawn care, carpets cleaning. You can use it for just about anything. If you can get a page, if you can get the websites we provide inside the course and book it and they pay, you can have that service be remote. It just is what it is. The links in the chat. I've been posting it repeatedly. Here's the links. <clears throat> and the crazy part is, you know, more than ever, you know, a word place, a WordPress and a, and a theme and you you out the door. I mean, there's a lot of different things that people are missing. I'm late, Erica. What are the course about? Rebel Zoe, thank you for the super chat. Some of the folks be hitting me with the I don't have a vacuum. Shut up. Listen. Listen, process for profits. That tells you right there, are they a deep cleaner or just a surface cleaner? They don't have a vacuum. I can go to uh, Target right now and get a, a vacuum for 70 bucks. I mean, I'm just telling you. Oops, camera going crazy. Is it really that bad out here? People have called for various services were spot on. God bless you. Wherever you at, tell us your city and state. We, we'd love to recruit some of those people to other places. I'm in Texas and it's the wild daggone west. It's, a, it's the wild west of Jose's and craziness out here. I mean, but it was like this too in North Carolina. This isn't like I'm making this up. You can go to North Carolina, Virginia, Tennessee, Alabama. Some of y'all drop your cities and states in here. Y'all ain't making this up. <clears throat> yes, middleman for millions has completely been separate. It is middleman the millions. Cam Cam kept beating my ankles about it. And I said, let me go ahead and finish it. It's just a course and a business in a box, like boom, click it. This is the steps that you take, boom, get it done. And what I learned is as I'm doing the rise of 20% in other classes, I'm talking about things y'all could do, but then I realized, okay, none of y'all have the basics or the foundation. This doesn't fit inside this class. Now this class is ridiculous, the over heavy. Like right now, I have a, a construction person calling me back. It is seven o'clock. I called them at one. Yeah, I ain't got time for it. Similar to moving companies. I talk about moving companies in here too. I show you how to get the link and how to, how to get it timed up, get it booked because again, they be so unprofessional. Let me tell you what happened when I moved out of my apartment. All my sons, I'm not bashing them, but I am going to bash them. You think, okay, I'm gonna go. I called my usual hookup guy. He couldn't do it. He was busy. I was like, okay, no problem. Maybe you got some work. So then I call all my sons. I booked it online for them to come at two in the afternoon, right? For three hours. <laughs> Tell me why somebody was knocking on my door super hard at 8 a.m. Three black guys. I said, hey, you guys, I booked it for two o'clock. Well, you ain't ready now. You can't do it now. Uh, no, you guys can come back in maybe two hours. Well, if we have to come back, you might not get us. I said, well, that's fine. Well, go, let's go call your manager and we'll get somebody else out here. So they go away. I drive back to the apartment. It's 1130. I went and got breakfast. Thinking they're going to be back at what? 2 p.m. I come back at 1130. Here they are again. Hey, you ready yet? First of all, no. 2 p.m. is what I told you. Unless you're going to come in here and box this stuff up, which is part of the service I paid for, I ain't trying to hear it. Oh, we ain't boxing nothing. They leave. I get on the phone. I literally, I'm not going to lie to y'all. Erica Williams cussed out their manager. It was like, that's the most unprofessional crap I've ever seen in my whole life. They send two boys. And I'll be honest, they were young. One was 25, just got out of the army. Other one was 20, was 19 going on 20, getting ready to go into the military Marines. They drove all the way up from San Antonio when these black guys lived right here in Pflugerville and drove up, boxed the stuff up like they had to anyway, 
and put it into the movie. At what time? 3.30. So, so when I tell y'all, even big companies deal with this drama, this isn't some made up thing like, oh man, Eric, you're being dramatic. No, like moving companies have these same problems, right? Many moving companies don't do small moves. There's an app called My Buddy. It's where you can log on with your pickup truck. There's a lot of stuff that's created out here to fill the void for the lack of customer service and efficiency. So, <clears throat> uh, no, Rashada, we'll probably have maybe one live course, one live training just to answer some questions and get you guys cleared up. But it's pretty straightforward. Like I pretty much go step by step how we did it, how we started it, how we got the website, how we got things booked, how we got paid, why QuickBooks, why I'm such a lover of QuickBooks, how it takes care of you, mails out of you twos, all the all the steps you'll think you'll need. I'm literally going over it. I'm literally, I got on the phone with Andrew earlier. I was like, what other things am I missing? As I started talking to him, just all came back to me. Internet is everything. <laughs> Where is it? <clears throat> Woo. Hold on. So much, so much I'm comments. There we go. A lot of money is left on tables because companies won't do small jobs. This is true. <laughs> Thank you. A lot of the stuff will be uploaded. Like as we cut off this here, it'll be uploaded there. And the reason why I'm telling you this is so many people try to think of like the next tech company they can do lifestyle blogging, YouTube blogging. But then when I talk to y'all, the first thing out your mouth is I need my money right now, Erica. JG Whitworth. I'm like, okay, if you need money now, those other things are beautiful. YouTube is beautiful. Podcasting is beautiful. What you need to do right now is something that puts money in your pocket today. Right. And a lot of you have cousins, brothers, uh, uncles who are handymans, painters. This is a way to put them to work in an organized way and also recruit other people to come work for you, a.k.a. employees. Because a lot of y'all that are losing these six figure jobs, you're managers. But how well are you managing? Can you manage yourself? Can you manage your time? A lot of these jobs, people want done from 10 to 2. And y'all think I'm joking. When I worked at Lowe's, we knew the good contractors from the bad. Good contractors came in at 5.30 in the morning, coffee in hand, getting all the wood, lumber, nails, stuff they needed. They were usually gone by 7.30. Peace out. They went to go do their work early. It's hot in Texas. This is even in North Carolina. It's hot in North Carolina. It's sweaty hot. They were getting ready to get it done and knocked out. 10 o'clock, lunchtime, noon, one in the afternoon. Oh, man, hey, how you doing? Oh, yeah, you know, I'm just getting some parts for this job. When are you going to start it? Well, I'm going to do it today. It's it's 1.30. By the time you leave Lowe's with all the parts, then go to their house, you're going to be all up in their house when their kids come home. You're going to be all up in their house when their husband gets home, when dinner's supposed to be cooked. You're going to be in there making noise and spilling dirt and sand everywhere. Does that make sense to you? Right. And that's the kind of mentality you have to deal with. If a person is lazy in their everyday life. And I know a lot of people are like, Erica, how dare you say that people are lazy? Easy. I'm hyper, super disciplined when it comes to business and business growth. I am crazy undisciplined when it comes to sometimes eating and working out. Hence, I put fences around myself. Only certain things are in the refrigerator in the office. Only certain things. My personal trainer comes to my office. I put on certain pants. I know 80 pants is tight. You better put some borders around this girl. You better wrap it up. Wrap it in. You have to understand if you are undisciplined or you're dealing with an undisciplined worker. Quickly. Quickly identify it so that you can move on to the next person or recruit around them. So, And this is what ends up happening with a lot of these people. I, listen, I don't know if they were eating paintbrushes or hammers or I don't know. Honey, yes. Oh, no, it's raining. Help us, Jesus. OK, so, yeah, the fence game <laughs> foreclosures. Let me tell you, the fence game makes so much money because of dogs. And if you paid attention to this whole Rona thing, a lot of people done got a dog. All the shelters were empty of dogs. And what's the number one deterrent <clears throat> for thieves is a dog, a fence, a properly working fence. You've been in a home five, ten, seven years. Fence looking terrible, saggy, looking bad. 
I've seen teams of three guys come through, pull all them boards off, come through. Next day, put new posts down, put the cement in, let it air dry, come back. Third day, fence up. I've seen it. Like beautiful clockwork. Just beautiful. And what you have to realize, and that's a team of three. That's that's the ideal for fencing, if I can tell y'all that. Now, you can get away with two dudes, but remember, it'll take longer. And also, you'll have people go, well, I went to Lowe's and I bought this little piece of fence to add to my fence. Could you just come put this over there? Yeah, I'm going to put it over there, but I'm we still going to charge you 80 bucks. Or are we going to charge you 150? We still going to charge you the price that we got to charge you, man. Because now we got to make sure the fence blends with the rest of the fence. Now, you don't bought this fence from Lowe's and you got the rest of the 85 percent of your fence is raggedy. So this becomes where you have to kind of communicate with people and tell truth to them, because what you're going to see when I was at Lowe's and the reason this collided for me, when I was at Lowe's, there were we were taught there were four types of shoppers. One was shoplifters. It was funny. This is a real video. Anybody here who worked for Lowe's, you know, the training video I'm talking about. We still use it to this day. I asked my friend shoplifters. <laughs> You have to be on the constant vigilant watch for those people who are stealing tools, parts, and yada, yada, yada. The maintainers, it's people who are just trying to maintain their home. They don't have a ton of money, but they're just trying to maintain it, okay? Then you have people do it, uh, DYers, do it yourself. And then you had another people who were contractors. These are the four pillars that make the store. I know y'all think I'm joking about the shoplifters, but that's a real part of the video. Um, and so Lowe's would tr teach you that these people make the store. There's people maintaining their home. There's people doing projects from watching TV. And then there's contractors who are trying to make a business off of it. So the prices had to be the right points. And also the discounts had to be right to make sure all three of those customers work together. I took that same training and realized that's what we do when we go outside every day. You have people trying to maintain their home. Um, they're trying to fight a HOA. They're trying to keep it nice. Kids tearing it up. They're trying to maintain that's all they can afford is maintaining it. That's where the painting, small painting, patches of exterior, small fence jobs, lawn care, cheaper lawn care in the summer come from. And then you have the DIY people, which you have to be grateful for because they tear up their house all the time. And when they do a bad job, then they call you to come fix it. Same thing, janitorial. Janitorial businesses is the same Lisa Ling as the uh, cleaning. And there's a whole series we talk about that and the butt button you can put for it. And why you actually like cleaning and lawn care more, it's you can put it on reoccurring services, right? Cleaning, if you use some of the websites we show inside the course, you can book that every two weeks. You can book that every four weeks. You can book that every other week, right? And why is that important? You've booked up that time, that space. You can consistently grow your business by projecting. If you know every Thursday, for the next two weeks, let's say, you know, every Thursday for the rest of the month is booked up. Now your focus goes where? OK, I got to book up the other days of the week and make sure my staff is consistently doing it. Now, how do you catch thieves? Now, what do I call thieves? Unfortunately, you may have thieves come along, people who poach business. Easy. How do you tell if every time you send out um, Do Donald Duck? <laughs> to a job site where they cancel the job or they don't want it anymore or they they something happens and then all of a sudden you follow up you do a follow-up call with them and it's just a little off every time you send donald the contractor donald the contractor is poaching if every time you send miss lisa to go clean a house and all of a sudden they had to cancel it or she went one time and then they never booked again and sometimes people snitch on it too they go well yeah they booked up they poached me can i get a different cleaner People do it because why a person who's a poacher nine times out of 10, they're trying to do it for a really low price to get cash money in their pocket. And what ends up happening is that makes the customer feel uncomfortable. And if you're doing your part as middleman to millions by doing that follow up call to get that review and to get that review of that that uh, <coughs> worker, you'll catch it faster. Trust, because it's it's a vibe they give off and it's not even being ugly about it. It's like. They poach and they always got phone problems. I promise you. They got the meth problems problem too. Work slash hospital sending my support. I will have to catch the replay. Well, thank you, Judy. Travel and be inspired for the $10 super chat. Listen, hammers, 
Um, the, the measuring tape, I swear they were eating it. I mean, we give them these little notepads to write out estimates. Oh, you done lost another notepad. Where did you put it? There's only so many places you can put an estimate pad by your book and your baby. You know what I mean? There's a lot of different things when you talk to me, you're like, we need that invoice paper. Take a picture with your phone and send it to me before you put it down. It's those kind of conversations. Yeah, Skynet been trash. H-Town, Phoenix, Arizona. Listen, Trent Davis, you can go right now and test my theory and go Google H-Town, maids, H-Town, land, all this stuff. And when we teach you in the class how to name your business, because what I've learned is so many of y'all are like, Erica, I have this really cool name, okay? The name is going to be Spody Okie Dopalicious Cleaning. No, stop. Okay, I have this other name. Let's call it Jump Up High in the Sky Cleaning. No, stop. We're going to show you how to properly name your business. The stuff y'all come up with blow my mind. Hey, Erica, we got this name for our trucking company. Joseph's God's Chosen Son Trucking Company. No, no, just, just stop, stop. Okay, so we're going to try. We talk about a lot because I realize Every class I do and I live teach and train that what I think is the basics and the foundation, somebody in the group don't know what the heck that's about, right? They're like, what are you talking about? Erica? So I break it down even more because I realize how many people don't. That's that's basics to me because I've done it before. Basics, not basic, everybody. <laughs> Cam Cam is the reason this course got finished. He's been consistently for two years like, hey, Hey, you gonna finish this? You gonna finish this? I'm like, dang, okay, Cam Cam. But yeah, you gotta realize I did it from 2014 to 2017. Um, and then my friend has been doing it the past two years. He just focuses on fencing. Let me tell you how I'm not trying to I'm not trying to overhype this business, but my friend is one of the best salespeople in real estate in Austin. He still books the fencing with the booking site. Doesn't go do any fence shops. Literally has a crew of people from our first crew and some others that just go do all the fence jobs for him. Money in his pocket, baby. We had one guy. It was, um, and, and he got, he don't watch my YouTube video, so I ain't worried about it. He was divorced. He was living in a place he hated. He's like, I just, I can be a helper. Old dude lost 68 pounds, y'all. That's how hot it is in Texas. He lost 68 pounds working for us for one summer. And then he got married to this girl. And guess what he went on to go do? Insurance. Because that's what she did. Now, honey, she got a brand new man. He lost 68 pounds. He was fit, tan from working with us all summer. And he was ready to go indoors for sure. Um, and I wish him all the best. Like, she married him. She did good. Uh, he, was, he was a nice guy. Sorry. Just thinking about it. Plan to get another service business tweaked and automated after this 90 day sprint. I'm telling you, Cam Cam, like I joke about it, but I'm serious. Like, okay, some of y'all know this. Most of y'all, if you're not in the rise of the 20% class, you don't know it. But literally, I have a guy I'm hiring right now. All he's going to be doing is running the leads and doing cold calling for me getting land. So people are like, oh, are you a wholesaler? No, I just know how it works. Trust me. Plenty of friends. Educated myself on it. Everything runs on leads and a phone. Most people don't return calls. Most people aren't consistent. And I'm literally going to have a kid next door who's going to be doing phones for land. I told him I literally could pop a laptop in an office, have a girl, have the website, book it, her call and confirm, and her call, make sure they make sure everything went well, did a little review, get us, suggest them over to Google because you can't send the link. I'm going to tell y'all why, what, what reason you get in trouble for that. There's a way you get these reviews. And and transition that business could easily do it. And the reason I talk about it is I was in my apartment and y'all noticed my journey. I was in a tiny, terrible apartment. Then the apartments kept getting bigger, didn't they? As you watch me on the TV, apartments kept getting bigger. The neighborhood kept getting better. I had a pool behind me. You know where I was living, okay? Neighborhoods I was living in. And because I could literally grab the laptop and make sure I secured myself six figures a year. So Again, 
It's one of those things. And honestly, you can scale it up and you can scale it down. That's the difference. You're not a contractor. You're not thirsty for work. You could eat, if you don't have employees, if you just run based off contractors, you have a slow month or busy month or you're traveling out of the country. If you want to and you don't have staff, you shut it off. Shut it right back on when you come back. It's it's a way that it works. <laughs> like literally what part of 2 p.m. and was very pushy about it, like almost annoyed. And I didn't know if it was because I'm a black woman. I'm living in these luxury apartments. They have to box up my stuff. How dare I not be ready? I didn't know what it was. But when the two little young white guys came here, like, OK. And then they started noticing, like one dude Googled his phone. He's like, are you? Are you on YouTube? Because he found my box of business cards where my YouTube's on. He's like, that's cool. So he just asked me for an hour because they stayed for three and a half hours. Didn't charge me for it. They charged me for two because all my sons was trying to make up for it. Charged me for two. And he asked me a million questions about investing in stock market and Forex and all this other stuff. Well, what do you think about this, Miss Williams and all this stuff? And it was very it improved. The all my sons experience. If they hadn't come, I'd have been like bashing all my sons on the internet for the world to see. Oh yes, good old fashioned, good old fashioned cold calling, yeah. And follow up, really. Do you go over this in the rise? I really no, I don't. Because the reason I didn't go over it is the rise of 20% is so heavy right now. Everybody I bring on is real estate or credit or really heavy topics or trucking. It's so full in the rise of 20% that I try to like completely separate this. And this is a course I worked on before. Um, I started working on this course in 2018. I was like, I'm going to finish it, y'all. I'm going to finish it. And I was like, I'm busy. I'm doing a bunch of other stuff. I'm traveling. I'm out. So what I end up <laughs> what I end up trying to do was like, you know what? I called Brand Andrew, double check. I started talking with Jamar and I realized all the tips and tricks I was still teaching and doing phone consulting on were working. There's several consulting calls where I literally just walk them through how to do what I'm telling y'all right now in the course. So okay. Some of these listen, y'all know. Let me see right here. There's a lot. Oh, there's a whole bunch I missed. Oh my gosh. Hold on. My eyeballs are hurting. Hello from Trinidad. What's up? Hey, listen, I can't make no promise. I can't make no lies to you. <laughs> Did you mention some of the positions on Glendon's live stream? Um, on which one? Which live stream? Did he have live stream today? No, but there's a one I recorded. I'm actually probably going to put it inside the course. I, I'm going to tell Glenn and I ain't worried about it, but I put it on Instagram where he spoke about me literally having a service business and that's what changed my life. And he noticed how much my life had changed watching from a distance, knowing that I owned the service business. And so I have it recorded. Just had a contractor in my home putting in recess lights in the kitchen. I had to ask them, hey, are you going to clean up, uh, clean up this drywall mess from the holes you made in my ceiling? Ray, they weren't. If you didn't bring it up, they weren't. And he won't be coming back. I promise you. I promise you. Jamar, listen, I really want Jamar to come in and do a little teaching segment inside the course. I don't know. Maybe if y'all twist his arm or like harass him on the Internet enough, he might come in the course and do a segment. But it's important because once you learn the skill, you could turn this business back on in a box. I mean, when I had Jamar in the Rise 20% class, he did a really good job covering property preservation. That's a whole nother business. But he knows he probably got some good horror stories for the class. What's the difference? The difference is the Rise 20% is an ongoing kind of mastermind class where we're going to be talking on Tuesdays and Saturdays. Tuesdays and Saturdays is a combination of what current what we're currently doing in this economy to kind of kick it up and rise into that 20 percent the rise of 20 percent is really for those like i keep bringing all my friends who are in business right now and what they're doing in their marketplace whether it's real estate credit trucking uh, i got a couple more people lined up but it's just making sure you get to people's system of their time and probably get about four more people that i know to come on and it's kind of a mastermind feel 
I really want the people in the Rise 20% to partner with each other and work with each other. The Middleman to Millions course is literally just me teaching you this one business model and this one business model only. Because honestly, if you want to get a business started up in two weeks, you could do it. And also because Cam Cam kept beating my ankle about finishing it. But that's the difference of the courses. Age backing for the home is a good business, but one change out costs $8,000 to $20,000. One refrigeration job can cost half a million. Do you mean 500? No, half a million dollars to one. Yeah. 10 people at one company made over 25 million. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and here's the thing. I'm talking about a low tech startup business. And the reason I keep using the word handyman, I use it on purpose. When you start to reach in your business jobs that require more than a handyman, you need to have a Rolodex of people that you can roll out and call. Point blank period that we always had a guy that we were like, oh, next. now what's up happening is they call you for everything. So we had one construction guy. Uh, he was a real estate investor. We fixed something on one of his properties. He had to finish it up. So he can just go ahead and get this like wholesale done. Because it was like a patch up. It was like a ceiling patch up. Well, then he called us for everything. And inside the course, I post pictures of my workers working on fences, working on a burned out house. Like he just needed boards to be put up. And I'm not going to make fun of him, but he was like a soft hand man. So like we're like, so you're calling us to, to board up the windows? Yeah, yeah. Can, can y'all come board these up? I'll go ahead and pay. Can I go ahead and pay? I was like, what else do you want us to do? Because that sounds very easy. So, yeah, of course, the crew got over there boarding windows up, screwing stuff in. And I've got pictures of it. We got a lot of pictures from our jobs. I'm going to see if Andrew can send me a few more. But it's one of those things where you realize it's such a simple task. But if we weren't there, who would accomplish the task for him? So. Facts, me and my staff are at a distributor when they open first thing in the morning every day to prep for those jobs. Boom. This is why I vlog my experience, because people really need to understand what it takes to be an entrepreneur in a hands on service business. So the difference is a lot of people treat things like a hustle. And what I'm trying to get more people to understand is if you just do a system, if you do a system and you follow it and you put people in place to complete the task, that's really all this is. It's a lot of it is management. A lot of it is management. A lot of people think, well, I got to be pizzazz heat and I got to do all this cool marketing and advertising. You got to do all that. You got to do all that. You just got to not be sucky like the rest of most of the people in your city and state. 300 strong in the chat. Make sure y'all hit that like button. Now, I'm going to always say be careful, natural kinks, whenever it comes to medical. Um, you can go eat close to home health care with this. But see, what you start coming across is you start having to check certifications and making sure certifications are active. And then so in the course, I talk about insurance and what type of insurance and why you put by this insurance. And most people say, well, you don't need it, Erica. You could just jump out there and start. But I'm going to give you reasons why you want it and why it makes you stand out and how cheap it is. I mean, keep it uber simple. Keep it so simple. Spodioki delicious. I mean, I'm listen. Erica, exactly. I changed my name of my business, Rise 20%. Yeah. Because I'm, I'm telling you, and I love y'all to death, but I'll literally be on the phone with people and they'll give me this ridiculously long business name. And I'm like, what, what, what do you do? What does your business do? <laughs> okay. Like even in the other class, when I was the other day, I was teaching in the class, I went over and saw where people could buy age corporations. And so people had these really elaborate names or very detailed, too detailed names. And I said, look at these corporations that are for sale. Most of the names are generic. You don't even know what it does. And that's the point, right? If you are in Houston, it needs to be something about Houston and something about what you're doing. Keep it simple. <laughs> God's chosen son trucking. I mean, not to depress y'all out, but I have to say this. My uncle had Chavis and Sons. And all his sons died. Unfortunately, all my cousins had passed away. Like one had a motorcycle accident, one had a truck accident, semi truck. And he was literally like, I have to change the name of my company. And it was like the saddest thing ever. But it was like he, he actually quit trucking altogether after that. He closed it down. But it was one of those things where you're like, oh, man, like the name of a business is reminding you every day what that business is and what it does. So. Honey, let me tell you, the reason I'm, the reason I'm putting this stuff out is 
I used to think, well, Erica, if you just inspire people, they will do A, B, and C. And what I realized is people need step by step by step by step. By. This is what you do now. This is what you do now. This is what you do now. And if you don't break it down to them like that, they'll, they'll go on a tangent. Well, I want my website to look even better. Stop. These are perfect templates for what you need. Click the button. Keep it moving. Right now, I know a guy who's in credit repair, and he has one of those generic credit repair sites that they get from you know what. I'm not giving them free publicity. And he's done $3 million in credit repair. I ain't trying to say no names, but you can probably guess. Okay? So when people sit here and obsess about names and websites, they lose in sight of what you need to daily bring in business and close deals. Jessica Hip said, please finish your resume. Double check it. I mean, crazy logos. Ain't nobody going to remember your logo unless it's like a, a scorpion riding a horse or something. <clears throat> People need to find the money to get these courses. I mean, listen, and here's part of the thing, too, I talk about. There will come a time I won't be able to do as much as I do now. And, you know, when I take my two months off, September, a lot of the videos are going to be pre-recorded and I'm going to be gone. Right. Um, as soon as I can get a, a children or a husband, I'm out, I'm out. Peace out. But I feel like I did a really good impact and I've shared what I could. And I've tried my hardest to show you all that business isn't scary. And if you're well organized, because what some people don't understand is I remember I was talking to a friend. And he was like, well, you pay your contractor 67 percent. 60 or 70 percent of the money sometime i say but yeah but that 300,000 ran through our bank account who do you think they give the credit lines to who do you think they approve for the big credit limits that's all you're seeing with some of these fba amazoners and all these different people they have these numbers running through these accounts which is why they're getting such big credit limits which is why they're getting approved for different things which is why they can go do other businesses Part of the money we made was able to allow our friend to go fully do real estate during the day and just let the people do the work. He don't even do the work. He don't even do a fence. He ain't did a fence in 2020. I know he may have did a fence or two in 2019, but he ain't did a fence. <clears throat> Jamar got that part. Jamar did a wonderful job. Yeah, they probably won't. <laughs> that ain't even a lie. I never considered a service-based business. I thought you had to have a skill or know the service, but I'm assuming you're not a trucker. That Listen, do y'all understand this whole process? I'm not a trucker, but I manage 12 trucks. I learn every bit of every day I'm in it. I have staff that does make sure we're getting routes. Now we have two XPO direct dedicated routes. We have drivers. We have over 10 drivers on staff. More people are getting their drug tested this week. We're going to possibly have more. Do you understand that all these businesses are our organization and systems? Organization and systems. You know the numbers. You know the steps. Boom. Organization and systems. Do you need to be a rocket science to figure out if a, if a maid is properly cleaned a house? Do you need to be a rocket science to figure out if somebody's properly uh, cut the grass and trimmed the bushes? Do, do, you, do you need that? Do you know what I'm saying? SB, can I bring a wholesaler? That's just it. You got to realize how busy all the people I deal with are that the whole point of the rise of 20% class was people who are millionaires. People, I know y'all didn't notice that, but everybody I bring on there was, is, and currently is a millionaire. And we bring them in and we talk. Yeah. But anyway, that's a story for another day. There's a, there's a reason I made that rise of 20% class. Um, Serene, you know, I'd have to bring Jamar on again to talk about it. Uh, say goodbye to the old economy. I don't know. I have to go look back at it. You know how many live streams I commented on? Like last night, Kevin Samuels did a four hour stream. I just, I was like loving the gym and I was like, oh, Kevin Samuels was on. Maybe he'll be on for 30 more minutes. He was on for two more hours. I was like, all right, I got to go to bed. This is crazy. I'll probably just do one live class, Stephanie, just to answer everybody's questions. Probably do two of them, just like one at the end of the month 
and one in the next month just to kind of get people's questions if they're having difficulties. But it's I mean, I'm, I, I'm not trying to be funny, but it is like pretty straightforward. <laughs> it's like step by step what we did and what um, what Andre does now. Three guys in my neighborhood are making a killing doing fine detail to people's cars. Added a YouTube channel, went crazy. Can't keep up. 150 a car. Service day and night, garage, driveway. I want y'all to understand what Rona has done to our economy. I drove over to, I was with some friends and we drove over because we were used to driving to, uh, what do you call that bird place? Shake Shack. We drive up and they're like, oh no, we, we changed it. You park and you walk up here. So we're like, we gonna have to park our car and walk up to the door when you could just bring it out to us. Why we gotta walk to the door? This is stupid. We can't go inside. We gotta wear masks. We ain't doing all that. We drove off and went to the next place. Now people are saying, that's lazy, Erica. But what, what is being happening to us right now is we're being conditioned in this economy to stay your home. Stay home. Don't go out. Don't do that. People still working, but they're home. So now what do they need? They need their home to be comfortable, functioning, working, not ugly, not somewhere they dread every day, right? So what else is in their home? Their car, their yard. What is HOAs? HOAs didn't take no break because of Rona. You think the HOA stopped putting a sign out in your yard to cut your grass because of Rona? No. Life still went on. Things still need to be repaired. Dishwashers still need to be serviced. Kitchen stoves, microwaves, everything. You think it, you think of it, it fits there. Number one thing you have too is people, parents, and kids painting houses ugly, hideous colors, and then be like, Yeah, can y'all just come over and just paint this white? Now you got to put 47 buckets of kills paint and regular paint on it to fix it. These things happen. So don't be surprised. And you don't have to go out and just go monster and do a mill. You literally could have a small crew of people that you consistently have worked through Monday through Friday and have them off on the weekend. People like you. Itching, itching to get sued. See, here's the thing. People don't understand that there's so much movement in this industry. So much movement. You could have a name. Somebody else got the name. Until somebody notices you making millions of dollars, they don't care. Bing, 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 bing. Jamar, bing, 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 bing. Jamar just gave y'all a free tip, free 99. Always have your contractors add you as additional insured on their policy. This way you are contacted if the policy gets canceled. Ding, 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 ding. This is also too why having employees was, in my opinion, always better. We always have a backup. We always had availability for our employees. And you'll weed out so many people. You go, hey, you don't have insurance? Hector, Jeff, you don't have insurance? Oh, no, no, I ain't got no insurance. You don't have no insurance? No insurance. I can't use you for this job. Okay, let me call over here and get some. It's like 300 bucks, y'all. It's like 75 bucks a month. There's no reason why they don't have insurance. I promise you, even if they're illegal. Now, I ain't going to keep y'all here all night. We've been here an hour. But what's the other questions y'all got for our roll out of here? 67. Listen, 60% or 70%. I mean, we literally were like, hey, 60% of the job. There you go. Advice for entrepreneurs starting in 2020, trend to watch out. Honestly, service businesses, tech, you have a lot of people who are going to move to, like, if you think about it, they're going to move to service. They're going to move to tech. They're going to have a lot of people move to, um, honestly, like, financial related. Now, there's something y'all should keep an eye out for in the future. Probably next year is going to be accounting. People think accountants are boring and who cares about that? Uh, there's going to be a bunch of accounting jobs come out because right now, and I'm going to just give you all a heads up. I spoke with maybe seven people that I was consulting today. I was exhausted. And every single one of them just got an email from the United States Small Business Loan Administration like today. Hey, 
Uh, remember we said y'all were not going to get a loan. Uh, we just reviewed it. You're going to get a loan. Hey, hey, remember that emergency loan disaster you applied for? And we said, no, we changed our mind. You're getting it. If the government is now, what is this, June 15th? And people applied in March and they just now going, hey, we're going to get you your money. The accounting is going to be a hot mess for the government and then a hot mess for y'all. OK, like keeping your book straight is going to be a real job. Like going through these people, and like so many people didn't get approved for PPP because their books were terrible. Don't ignore what I'm saying. Accounting is going to make a comeback. Strong. See, look, I told somebody something about service first, which has been my problem because I have no skills. That's the thing. You got to have skills. I don't know how to do no fence. I don't know how to paint. You see me? Do I look like I clean up a, a, a garbage disposal? No. We talk about it in class. What would be the prerequisites for someone who has no trade skills starting for zero in this business, best chance of success? Well, you're working from it from the laptop perspective. You're working from it where you're booking it. The whole course is called middleman to middle. We're not talking about fixing sinks. That's not what we're doing here. We're sending somebody to do it. Why are we doing that? Because majority of contractors and handymen and people who could work for you, they don't have consistency and they don't have consistent leads. So really, they get a little bit of humble pie and the summertime is the worst, but it's a good time because they really want to have some money in their pocket. They see everybody else making money. They want to work. And your job is to keep the leads coming in and keep them busy. That's really what your job is. And trust me, you don't even have to put out a sign, a flyer or knock doors the way the computer and these phones and Yelp and a couple other things are set up now. Honey, y'all got it too easy. Let me see what else I got in here. Honey, HOA love making that money. Look, HOA knows you're working from home. Listen. HOA knows in these stressful times, this is probably the letter they sent to your house. In these stressful times, we want to encourage all neighbors to get your fat asses up and go cut your grass. Thank you, HOA mentioned. <laughs> I mean, y'all think they're going to take a break and get in that money in those fines? Do you think? Like, again, part of why in the rise of 20% class, I teach them about parking lot and trailers and all that stuff is because people are going to need a way to park all these excess cars, excess stuff. HOAs are not going to play with y'all. Retirement and pension. What do you, you got a question mark there. Give me some more brother truth. What do you mean? There you go. Listen, listen, Jamar out here just throwing out free gems all day. Y'all better get your pen and paper out and you better get writing. You better get to writing. Have you ever met someone who comes to work and even though they're not the manager, they managing people? You ever seen that? Put a one in the comments if you ever seen what I'm talking about. Don't make me sound like I'm crazy. Somebody comes to work and when they get there, when Ben comes to work, everybody knows what they got to do because Ben's at work now and Ben ain't even the manager. That's that's listen, a lot of y'all are overthinking a lot of this because people like having paychecks on consistent. And guess what? QuickBooks will pay them for you. Direct deposit. Gusto is another good one. Paying your staff. See, people <clears throat> have a tendency to be like, well, if I can't do it myself, I don't want to do it. That's a that's a rough way to think. Uh, Geo Psycho, that's a that's a quick phone call. That's like that's like saying if I had a kid that was gonna drive my car, right? And they had their own insurance and they're 20. I just call to make sure I get put on notification if they cancel their insurance. It's the same thing. It's like Torino app, any of the apps. Oh no, it jumped. Dang it. Let's see where we at. Ruben, haha, oh my God, I'm an accountant, Erica, and learning QuickBooks Online Pro. I'm using this as a sign to start my bookkeeping business. I promise you, let me tell you something. The seven calls I got today were all booked yesterday. And every single one of them were like, Erica, they just approved me. 
and and they told me they weren't gonna do it. What should I do? Well, uh, follow the instructions. <laughs> like, like if this is PPP, uh, you're following the instructions. If it's emergency EDIL, you're following the instructions. You know why they're doing this? They gotta get rid of this money. A lot of this money they promised y'all, they gotta get rid of it. See, they wrote this big old bill and they ain't even used half the money. I think they used 70% of the money for PPP after they re-upped it. See, do you see what's happening here? I want y'all to understand why I'm, why I'm teaching this right now. There's no, there's no more money for employees. You're not getting another stimulus check. That's a wrap. Who's out here getting money right now? Business owners. Who's getting additional funding right now? Business owners. They just changed Main Street lending from you having to have a six-figure business. In order to qualify, the minimum loan was going to be $250,000. So you was going to have to make, your business was going to have to make like 250 k I mean, the minimum loan was half a million dollars. So you were going to have to make 200000 at least to qualify. Well, now they've adjusted it. The loan, they'll start the loans at 250000 So that means you could be a business owner making 62000 a year and still qualify. So what has the government done told you? I mean, what are they telling you over and over? We will do whatever it takes to keep businesses alive. Sorry, employees. You want some food stamps? You want some Section 8? That's what I got for you. But for these business owners, I have millions of dollars. Right now, it's June, July, August. The government is getting rid of every single dollar it has for these grants and government initiatives. Do you see that guy in New York? Got $86 million. They can't find him now. Who you know get $86 million and I can't find you? Who? You saw they give old boy in Atlanta $2 million. Nobody fact checked the fact that he didn't have 100 employees and cut him a check of $2 million. So I just want you to pay attention what's happening here. They're setting the stage for business owners. The whole point of me making the rise of the 20% class was because this is where you're going to have people become millionaires. This, listen, me servicing, listen, me segueing, and you can go go back and look and listen to the podcast on Truck and Hustle when I was talking about blah, 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 this and that about trucks. This is a service business. I'm managing trucks. This is just bigger level, this is bigger numbers. Instead of it being 100,000, it's a couple mil a year. So now you're managing trucks. You're making sure the driver's in there. They're paid, truck service. This is all what? Management. Right? You hear the horror stories of drivers getting ate up because they're not business owners. They aren't good managers. They aren't good integrators. See, people like me who are visionaries and super eccentric and, ex, ex, you know, <clears throat> excuse me, extroverted, People think, oh, man, that's what you got to be to be a business owner. No, I don't thrive unless I have partnerships. My last partnership with my friend, Andrew Bryant, he was the what? He's also an extrovert, but he's an integrator. He could do the daily task, daily operations. I have staff in here. Cynthia Hart, a couple people came by and seen this. Our staff manager, our logistics manager, Chris, integrator. Savannah works for me, integrator for the social media. You have to be able to follow systems. If you can't follow systems, you don't have a business. That's just plain and simple. If you can't follow systems, you don't got a business. And this is what is opening up the floodgates for business owners. You know who's still getting credit right now? Let's have a real talk. Business owners. You know who's getting approved for construction? Business owners. You know who's getting approved to close on all kinds of properties? Business owners. Right? You know, let's, let's have a real talk. Right? When I sit here and talk about this building, the rent's a thousand bucks a month and somebody's complaining about a thousand dollars on a commercial property, they're not a business owner. There's somebody who's going to go work from home. So now they got to go move to a bigger house so they can have a room in their house to work because they really aren't organized enough to do what? Manage other people working underneath them. Okay. I'm not going on a rant here, but I just want y'all to understand that like, is the stage is being set for who's valuable. And this sounds horrible, but you have a lot of people who they business ownership isn't for them, right? They'll work, they'll be, listen, that 80 year old guy we had and his 75 year old wife, wonderful, 
wonderful people. They worked for one man for 20 years. And then when he was ready to close his business because he was just a business owner, he didn't really care. They didn't have nowhere to go. She had some clientele she cleaned for, but again, some that's some people. They will always work for someone, and that's okay. You just have to decide where you want to be on this scale. No. Majority of like what you'll learn in the classes, even when it comes to accounts, you know, Sherwood Williams, all these places, Lowe's, Home Depot. Nine times out of ten, if you even if you're the one who's having to do this the service, you line a lot of your equipment that you'll need is so is already like th net 30. So it depends on what you're trying to do. How did I know trucking business was was a service business for you? Well, here's the thing. Part of it was a little bit of a uh, rebel in me, I will say. And the reason I say rebel in me is I kept seeing, and I'm being nice, I kept seeing everybody else, East, Middle Eastern, European, Eastern European, um, Asian, uh, African, winning inside of trucking because they were in management. They were in brokers. They were in management. They were in repair and parking lot ownership, to clarify, and people who were complaining and having a fit and saying trucking was no good and they were having problems were unfortunately a lot of um, white men and, and black men. That's that's the bulk of people. Like, hey, it's, they're not paying us like they used to. We don't make 10K a week anymore. We don't do these things. We have to follow rules and regulations. And, and for me, I was like, it's just business. It's not personal. You, you're getting six to eight grand a month, more than the average guy. Sometimes you're getting 10K a month. Right now, we have a driver who's 30% uh, flatbed. Flatbeds are hard work. I'm not going to frown on you. It's hard work. He's a veteran. He drove that truck so hard last week, we had to cut him a check for almost $3,000. You know your girl was about to throw up. Like, oh, he just made $3,000 off of us. But that's just the thing of business. They're working very hard. It's just all service. It's all service. It's all management. And what people have to understand when it comes to trucking, it's just the conversations you'll deal with. Same thing with contractors. Sometimes the men can be a little potty mouth or can be a lot of barking. And you're like, okay, whatever. Keep it moving. <laughs> oh, man. LP said, I just got, got done cutting grass. Saw you were on. This is the class I've been waiting. I spend more on alcohol this weekend. Thank you. Purchase off top. And possible, possibly, I want y'all to understand this. You have all these college students. Where are they going to go do? Some of them are not going to go back to college. You're going to have a young workforce. One of the people in my office right now is 23 years old. Three of the other people I was trying to hire for next door, they're all 2021. 20, and people are like, well, Eric, you're just hiring them because it's cheap labor. No, I'm hiring them because they're availability and they're going to show up to work. Because they need experience and they need skills. Same thing when it comes to this. You're going to have a group of people that want to come be an employee because people like hearing the word benefits. I don't want you to be scared, though, especially those in North Carolina. You're going to have to provide workman's comp. It's like five bucks, 10 bucks, 130 for the year. It's pennies on the dollar. Are you going to let 130 bucks for the year stop you? You're going to let 300 bucks of insurance for a million dollar coverage stop you? I just think, you know, some of y'all are looking at it from perspective of ownership, owning something you can pass down to your kids. And, and you know, right now, like I'm not trying to knock anybody or make people feel bad. My 13 year old nephew has a zero turn lawnmower and 32 clients that pay him 60 bucks when he cuts their grass and cuts their bushes. I just want to a 13 year old. Now he is doing actively doing his service business. But I want you to understand the barriers of, of what you're creating and scaring. Like, I'm scared to do something. I have a 13 year old nephew who has like 32 yards. And so it cracks me up because it's like service businesses are a great way for young people or staff to get money in their pocket and actually provide a good, physically provide a good. The course is already out, Bless King. I'll be putting all the uploading the rest of the videos today. And um, if there's any left tomorrow, I may I may get a quick some more photos from Andrew um, because I was like, give me some more photos. This is all I have on my phone. 
just showing y'all some of the work we did. Accounting is big. Both my dad retired and brother are CPAs and they've had to turn down contracts constantly. This will be the future. This will be the future. People don't want to hear it. Tech is bubbling heavy. Cisco just revamped CNA, made it entry level. CCPMP, no prerequisites now. Yep. HOAs are the worst. They are. They can be. Did you, Desiree? Congratulations. That means you are you are the round of people. They were like, hey, we still got money left over. Uh, she needs some money. Throw it to her quickly. Congratulations. You about to be paid. Let me be very clear on that. Because they even made it, I'm trying to be careful. They made it so that even these fintech companies were going to guarantee you about 20 grand. $20,833. Now, if y'all got that, let me know because some of y'all, that's what you, a lot of people been quiet. So, <clears throat> what else y'all got in here? <clears throat> So listen, I'm going to tell you something. My accountant firm that I work with right now, the original business owner is there. She sold the business to Ron. Ron is like the big muscle man and he looks over stuff, but it's the workers that still do the accounting office. So I, I literally could do a whole class if I just interview Ron. Be like, hey, hey let's talk for an hour. But I doubt he'd want to do that. But that also comes into buying businesses. And the rise of 20%, we'll talk about it more about buying businesses because I think that's vital in this transition. You'll see a lot of baby boomers who are like, I'm tired, I'm old, I'm out. Right now, I've got people in the repair shop who are 65 years old. Yeah, I'm going to stay on for another year, year, Erica. What if he falls? What if he hits his hip? What if something happens? I've kept all those scenarios in my mind. Trust me. Oh, okay, you said, how do new companies set up retirement plans for their employees? Easy, brother, truth be told. You can actually call Edward Jones. You can call a lot of these uh, companies. Um, TD Ameritrade is really popular on it, and you could set up uh, different types of plans. So don't be scared. But yeah, they're going to focus you more towards 401k stuff. Basically. What am I smoking in here? This I'm never smoking. This is a... Hey Dewey steamer. This helps my face glisten because it's hot in Texas and dry. And it also helps my throat and my nostrils because uh, dusty, it's very dusty where um, it's very dusty where it is. Hold on. Drivers are worse than. So also to set up a chain of management, some of the guys think, well, if I tell Erica, she'll say yes. No, I go contact Chris or Mike. Don't contact me. <laughs> it's after five. So anyway. Look how y'all the rise of American greed. No, not necessarily. My 16 year old is learning click funnels. Bye bye college and debt. Yeah, pretty much. I can't wait. Last of the recession literally created the show. Oh, for sure. Oops, I accidentally pushed the wrong button. I think it timed somebody out. I'm sorry. Guys, what's going on with the cell phones? Everybody having problems? Yeah, they went out today. It was crazy.
All right. So anyway, you guys, that's all I had. <clears throat> oh, wow. I did the books for a pool company once and their operations manager was stealing clients and the boss knew but did nothing. You know why? The boss probably made that person so integral to the business that he didn't know how to unplug him out of the business. That's crazy, though. So, look, I'm going to get on out of here. That's the class. Um, and uh, that's the course right there, you guys. I'll be uploading videos in here since it's raining outside and waiting on some good food to deliver to office. And uh, I want you guys to have a wonderful night and we'll see you guys soon.